Hey everybody, it's Chris, and I'm back with another fat acceptance video. I'm going to start doing spotlight videos on different fat activists, some of our favorites. <laughs> and today I'm waiting for you guys to answer a poll that I did on the community post, but I figured since I have some time, I was going to make one. And since she's popping up really big all over the place again, no pun intended, uh, I figured I'd start with uh, our favorite spoiled entitled travel princess J Bay official Jalen Cheney. So for those of you that are new here, I'm Chris. I have a medical background as well as an extensive weight loss, diet, nutrition, fitness background. Not so much fitness as far as like lifting weights and all that, but proper exercises and stuff for just overall health, weight loss, especially when you're overweight, things like that. If you're a returning viewer, Thank you so much. I love you guys. <laughs> like I said, we just surpassed 500 viewers recently and we are on the countdown to a thousand and beyond. Okay, so for those of you who don't haven't watched before, I'm gonna be showing these TikToks. I will read what I can off of the screen because with TikTok, there's copyrighted music, you know, with YouTube, we have to um, mute it. And, um, I'm just going to talk and give my opinion. The last time I made a TikTok video, somebody commented that I talk too much. Well, as a reactor, it's my job to react, which includes a lot of talking. <laughs> so I'm sorry if it's too much for some of you guys. You can't please everybody, right? Um, <laughs> it is what it is. So that being started, uh, that being said, if you hear any noise in the background, kiddos playing a video game while we're waiting to do some Halloween stuff tonight. That's right. It's Halloween today. So happy Halloween. Hope you guys are having a good one. You'll probably see this tomorrow. Might get it out today, but, um, either way, I hope you had a good one. Hope you didn't eat too much candy. Okay. So I'm going to watch some videos of J Bay's and a couple about J Bay. So let's get started. Things Plus Size Travelers Hate Part 2. Okay, so it says Things Plus Size Travelers Hate Part 2. Obviously, you heard that. This is a stitch from somebody called your boy Matthew. Healthy exercising. <laughs> He's working Healthy out. diet. He has an apple. Ew. Go fuck yourself. And, <laughs> and that last one, he said healthy relationships. Um, and, you know, this is very true. Um they, d they don't eat healthy. These people insist that they're not overweight because of their diet, but they're overweight because of their diet. They aren't getting overweight on brown rice and chicken and salad and um, berries <laughs> it is, and water. It's just not happening, right? You can't get to be this woman's size and maintain it without not just overeating, guys. You have to gorge yourself. This is crazy. And she grinds my gears. A lot of them do, but she's one of the worst because she's so privileged and spoiled and entitled and to still just be demanding for more, 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 more. No, I, I ain't about that, sis. Okay, let's look at a couple more of her and then we'll go to her. Um. <clears throat> When it comes to my plus size travel petition, people like to compare a person needing to buy additional plane seats to the concept of paying for overweight or additional luggage. But there, this is a stitch from a guy called Clarkson Lawson. And whenever she said about paying for additional seats and stuff, he pointed at him indicating that, yes, everything she's demanding she says she doesn't, but she wants us to pay for it because she doesn't want her prices to go. She wants everybody's prices to go up, which means we are paying for her gluttony. But you need to understand something. Once you check your luggage, there is a human that has to handle that luggage and get it onto the plane. And did you also know that back injuries are very common for ramp agents at the airport? To did you also know that back injuries are very common for nurses and paramedics? and firemen who have to move morbidly obese people whenever they have a problem. Hmm? Just, just throwing that out there. To lower that risk. I was a paramedic, so I know this. The back injury. Strict standards have been set on how much that baggage can weigh. Yes, yes. You, your luggage cannot weigh an ounce over the set rate, or they make you pay more. So... Why, why are humans allowed to be hundreds of pounds over the weight limit? This is actually 
a danger. This is a danger for the weight and balance limits of the plane. What's up, girl? It's been a while. You might be referring to my video here or other people's videos where they essentially said exactly what you just said. I like the example you just gave, though, saying that because of the labor involved with moving luggage, that's why you have to pay for them, which is completely untrue. The reason you have to pay more if your bag weighs more is because there's a certain amount of weight that is allotted per passenger mm -hmm. on the plane. If it goes over that, more fuel and energy has to be used to move that plane. Therefore, it costs the airlines more money. So in order to be profitable and maintain their profit margins, they have to charge for that. So I hate to break it to you, but on a plane, science doesn't know whether the weight is on you or if it is under the plane because true. it's just weight. Let's be clear that luggage is an issue. <laughs> That's very, very true. He's not wrong. Um, yeah, no, he was right. So let's go to actually, let's go to Jay Bay herself's page and let's see what she has to say. So you want to hear my hot take on plus size travel and why I think every plus size traveler should get a free second and even third seat on an airplane? Then you better keep watching and sign my petition to make some real change. I really don't want to hear it, but you're going to say it anyways. And did you hear that? A second and third seat if needed or fourth or fifth or whatever. Like this, the, the so many overweight people will end up doing this, will take advantage of this and airlines are gonna lose money so guess what they are she says they she don't want everyone else to pay but she does want everybody else to pay because they're gonna say oh my god there's all these fat people getting two and three seats just letting themselves ooze out all over the place all over the seats we can't fill those let's up the cost of every other ticket 30 40 50 bucks so yes they are going to make up the difference in that price by making people who fit in the seats pay for it and they're not giving any discounts for skinny people like my kid who only takes up half a seat. So she wants everything to be fair for everybody. But really, all she wants is a handout for really, really fat people. She lumps disabled people and people using mobility devices into her argument. She, she doesn't mean it. She doesn't care. What she really means is morbidly obese people who don't want to do the work to lose weight, a.k.a. her and her husband, who is almost as big as she is. Let's just state facts. Plus size travelers need more space. Everybody who travels needs more space. A plane is not super, super comfortable. And frankly, I don't care if it's comfortable, like it's decent enough, but I care more about safety than comfort when it comes to being in a giant tube flying through the air. I care more about safety and the you know, the knowledge of, of, and skill of the pilots and stuff like that. If I have to be a little bit crammed to get where I'm going, fine, so be it. I don't care. But that being said, it's not fair for anybody to be cramped next to somebody who's spilling into over half of their seat, aka people like her who don't want to pay more for a seat. And guess what? I apologize for the dog. Um, and people like her who have the money to travel all over the place all the time, she has the money to pay for a second or third seat. She just doesn't want to because, oh, thin people don't have to buy a second seat. No, because their butts fit into one seat. And many people agree that plane seats are too small, even for the average size person. As a plus size traveler myself, I know they really aren't though. Most people fit in them in an all right manner. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze for if you have big shoulders or you're tall, but all in all, it's not it's not the worst thing, you know what I mean? And you can always upgrade to business class or first class. How uncomfortable and unsafe it can be to squeeze into a tiny airplane seat. You know what's unsafe? Uh, a pilot when he's doing the weight add up for his plane, using the estimate that every passenger has an average weight of 190 to 195 pounds, and people like her are 350 to 400 pounds, and thus there is a couple hundred pounds, maybe more, of unaccounted for weight. Most people are over 190 pounds, so there is so much weight that is not accounted for, that planes have fallen out of the air because of this. 
Now, I know she would say, well, not everybody is 190 pounds, some are less. Yes, some are less, but not many people, and they're not much less. And the people that are more are usually a lot more. So I personally am all for weighing people discreetly and making people pay per pound. I mean, that would really fix these people's wagons, wouldn't it? Boy, they bitch such a fit it would be unbelievable but I believe you should pay for the pound because that's how much fuel I'm using on the plane is way less than hers why should I have to pay for her part you use up more resources you should have to pay more and that's just life Jalen if you don't like it stop using enough resources for two or three or four people we are not asking for special treatment or luxury accommodations. We simply want enough space to travel comfortably and safely without fear of being discriminated against because of our size. It's truly... But sitting next to somebody like you is unsafe and uncomfortable. I'm sorry, but it is. That simple. If you agree that every traveler deserves to fly... Oh, and she's so snarky and condescending and she acts so legitimate it's that simple well you know what it's that simple that you can lose weight lose some weight don't eat as much this woman is not overweight to this size because of medicine or genetics or or uh a medical condition she is she could not ever move her butt cheeks off of a couch and still lose a ton of weight. All you have to do, yes, exercise would be good. I know she has pulmonary hypertension, so I wouldn't recommend she super exert herself, but she does go travel all over the place and, um, you know, risk the, the blood clots and embolisms from flying on a plane at high altitudes. But she could literally eat. This woman eats over 4,000 calories a day, guys. I guarantee it. She could eat 2,500 calories a day, which is enough for me and my 11-year-old son combined and still be dropping weight like crazy. That's how much food she's eating. So she could very easily still be eating a lot of food and lose some weight. Technically, she wouldn't even have to change what she's eating, which you know is not healthy food. She could still eat a bunch of her craptastic food in large portions and still lose weight. She wouldn't have to really start tweaking it and 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 you know really nitpicking for at least 100 150 pounds because this woman needs to lose 200 250 pounds so i don't want to hear it it's not like she would have to be like somebody like me who's 170 pounds and only five foot one and i have to diet to lose any meaningful weight and see it within a reasonable period i have to go down to like 1200 calories a day this woman doesn't need to do that she can eat 600 1800 calories more than my maintenance at max which would be like 17 or 1800 a day if i'm exercising for an hour and a half two hours every day she could eat that and in whole foods that's a lot of food and still lose a lot of weight so i'm sorry but she's selfish and she's entitled and she's a spoiled princess and she's greedy in every sense of the word so i'm not happy about these stupid demands i wish i had the money and the privilege to be able to go gallivanting all over the freaking globe, all over the place all the time, and complain about the little inconsistencies and, and the little annoyances and the little discomforts of, oh, traveling, oh, on my, on my plane trip to Spain, I, I was so uncomfortable. I would love to be able to go fly somewhere and take a vacation even once a year. Most of us cannot afford that. You know what I mean? And it is what it is. You know, times are hard. Economies are hard. Whatever. We still go do stuff and we still have a good life and it's fun. But she doesn't realize how lucky she is to be flying all over the place and to go so many places that she has all these complaints. By comfortably and without fear of discrimination, then go ahead and please sign my petition and share it with everybody that you know. No. And you know what? Don't. Let's work together to make air travel more inclusive and accommodating for everyone. So you want to hear my hot take on plus size travel and why I think every plus size traveler should get a- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if she wants to do her part, then she needs to be trying to lose some weight. Things that plus size travelers hate. When the tray table can't come down- I'm sorry if you're not looking at this. But her, of course, she has the comments turned off for, for these videos because she can dish it out and say what she wants, but she can't accept what people are saying because she doesn't want to hear the truth. 
Um, she can't even almost fit into the seat. Not only does her tray table not go down the whole way, she almost cannot get it open at all. When you are that big that you can't like fit in a seat width wise, but from front to back wise, you can't even fit. What At what point doesn't this make you say, holy shit, I need to make some freaking changes. Maybe I eat a little too much. Maybe I eat a lot of too much. Criminy. Down. Worrying about asking for a seatbelt extender. Having little to no room to move. Well, that's your own fault. I'm sorry, but it's your own fault. You should have got business class or first class and you can lose some weight. Narrow aisles and bulkhead seats. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Oh, the aisles on the plane are too narrow now too. So now just like, you know, we can so easily uh, make hotel hallways wider, we have to make the aisles on planes bigger. So in other words, bigger planes, heavier planes that, you know, they, they make planes the size as they do for different reasons, for the ability to fly, for safety. When they make planes bigger, they have to do a lot of work to make sure that they get the balance right. They have to estimate weights of everything that goes on the plane right so that that plane can get in the air and, and stay in the air and stay balanced. Um, it's not so easy to just be like, oh, okay, we'll just hurry up and whip up a few more planes and make them wide. It's like they have to do a lot of technical like things to make sure these planes are safe. You know what I mean? And it's like, it is far easier for this woman to skip a couple snacks a day than it is for them to just build all new planes. I mean, doesn't she understand? And she doesn't. That's the worst part. She does not see or understand or give a crap how, um, how selfish what she's asking for is. <laughs> Tiny airplane bathroom. Listen, nobody fits comfortably into those damn bathrooms. I'd be surprised if she could even fit in that bathroom. But again, it is what it is. They don't want to make a huge, luxurious bathroom in the plane because, uh, you know, a lot of the time, if a flight is four or five hours or less, most people are not using them. And um, they, they want more room for the stewardesses to have their stuff to make you little food and stuff and to be able to put more seats on the plane and more money. Worrying you're going to break the toilet. Jesus, if you're afraid you're going to break a toilet, you've got problems. Because a toilet can hold a pretty heavy ass. So, I am sorry, but at some point you need to say to yourself that you have that you have outgrown society. You have outgrown societal norms. And nowadays, things are being built bigger and more accommodating and more extravagant than they've ever been built before. And you're still outgrowing it. At what point do we have to say enough is enough? Because you know what? It's never going to be enough. They're going to make stuff to comfortably accommodate your size 6X self, six self and size 7X self. Then what? Oh, we, you know, it's not accommodating for people that are 8X and 9X and 10X and exillion X. So rebuild everything. You can't. And guess what? Most people her size and beyond are not out traveling that much. They're not globe trotting and being out and about and supposedly what she says, living her best life. They're not. They're at home because it's hard for them and they have health problems. The moving is difficult. Look at Amberlynn Reed. She almost never leaves her apartment because it's too hard. And she's not much bigger than this woman. This woman is going to get to a point where she is not physically going to be able to travel. Getting pat down because you're fat. Oh, get over it. Getting patted down because you're fat. Maybe you're smuggling a bomb in under your fupa or something they have to check they check everybody they they pat everybody down they 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 check everybody if anything looks weird or anything sets off an alarm they they get the pat down you could be 110 pounds soaking wet and get it so just knock it off tiny airport chairs with armrests 
Well, then stand. Stand at the terminal and wait for your for your plane it will do you some good because you'll burn some extra calories or you know request a special seat or bring a plus size wheelchair or something like that you know what i mean if you require such extravagant specialized accommodations supply them yourself you know little miss money bags has the money to do it things that plus she got she gets me going guys i am so sorry <laughs> i am so sorry This says happy Halloween. It's a, she's a partner. Whatever. It's close. It's a cute outfit. She looks cute. I'm glad she's comfortable and happy. She's if you're not looking at the screen, it's showing her walking in a pumpkin patch, like right at the beginning. She's not out like actually in the patch. She couldn't do it. Um, and she has these clothes on, you know, this outfit on this skirt and skirt. And it looks nice, looks really nice. It looks nice on her. Um I really think she's using swimming filters and I think the clothes hide stuff, but see, she's really lucky in the sense she carries all of her weight in her upper body. Like she has no neck and she has a really big face and head and she's got a big upper body and thighs. She has thinner ankles and stuff where like somebody like Amber or like Jordan Underwood has very bad lymphedema and lipedema and they've got really bad swollen like tree trunky legs. And I'm not trying to be mean, like I'm just using that as a descriptor because that's kind of how they are and that's how they look. Uh, that hasn't happened for Jay Lynn. And I firmly believe that's one of the reasons she can still travel is because when you have big legs like that and ankles and, and, and stuff like that, like with Amber, she can't hardly walk. She shuffles and swings her leg to the side and can hardly, and, and like has to waddle side to side and can hardly lift her legs. It really hinders her. I think Jalen is lucky that she does not have that problem. And that's one of the reasons that she can still walk and be so mobile that, and she's still young. She's like, what, 26, 27, but it, it will catch up to her. Well, she looks nice in the outfit. I'm not going to fault her for like, you know, look, trying to look nice. I mean, everybody deserves to, to look nice. Uh, let's see if we can find any more of her travel stuff. Oh, my God. Okay, um, it shows her walking through the airport. She's, she actually walks quite well for her size. I thought she was, I peg her to be about 360 pounds me i would say between 350 and 380 um she walks she still moves really well um for her size and, and that is good for her and that's actually i'm really happy for her in that sense because she could really really up her weight loss and lose weight if she cut what she ate and just went on a walk like go find a nice area to walk and walk like 30, 40 minutes a day, take your time, although she's walking at a pretty good clip in this video, or go to the pool for a half an hour, 45 minutes. Guys, if she did that and cut her, her, the weight would fall off of her. She would feel so much better. She would look better. Her, her pulmonary hypertension would show improvements. Oh my God. But anyways, in this video, I just had to give you that observation. It's crazy. Um, the video says, hot take, every airline should have a customer of size policy like Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines, stop it. Stop this. You're setting a bad example for everybody else. Um, and guess what? They do have a customer of size policy because everybody has a size. Like I'm not as big as her. She's a big person. My son's a really skinny person. Um, everybody is a customer of size. So suck it up. <laughs> And if she's bitching about it so much, then just fly Southwest Airlines all the time. Let you make them broke. Yeah, and here she is just off on another trip. Um, I, I think that this is Southwest setting a bad example. And I think people like her, more and more people are going to use that and take advantage of that and abuse it and it's going to bite southwest airlines in the butt and then what are they going to do they're not going to be able to to retract it so they're going to raise the prices on all their other tickets to make other people pay for her okay 
Here, this looks like it's the same day. It's a different angle. It's her walking with her uh, carry-on into uh, an airport. And it says, one in six passengers agree. Airplane seats are uncomfortable. FAA stats reveal the truth. They're not the most, yes, they're not the most comfortable thing. But they are going for efficiency and, and volume over complete comfort. That's why they offer first class. You know, you pay more, you, you get the nicer, bigger seats, but they still need to make their money. Like, flying an airplane isn't freaking cheap. But I said, I oh, my God. Here are, the fa here are the facts, she says. Last year, the FAA held an open comment period inviting the public to share their thoughts on whether airplane seats are too small for safety. Since then, when asked about my plus-size travel petition, they only refer to that open period. So I took matters into my own hands and begun analyzing responses collected. Here's what I've found. One in six people believe airplane seats are too small for safety and comfort. One in six people believe that airplane seats are uncomfortable. Okay, so like I said, buy a first class seat or suck it up or don't fly. Don't go on 10, 12 trips a year, Jalen. How about that? Keep your butt at home or go somewhere you can sit in a car and drive, which I'm sure is not comfortable for you either. But there are, there are workarounds. There just are. Like I said, it, it, even if I could afford to fly somewhere six or seven times a year, I wouldn't. I'd be doing other things with that money. But this woman clearly gets funded largely by her parents and has no concept of, oh, I might have to save some money. I mean, she just spends, spends, spends. Um, and good for her, but holy heck, that's not, that's not a lot of most of us, right? I mean, entitled, entitled. Okay, let's see a couple more. I'm just like going through these. Okay. As a plus size babe, it can be so hard to find a towel that I... Okay, I'll start this over. If you're not looking at the screen, it's her in her bathing suit uh, holding a folded towel. This is an ad for uh, Lux Love Towels, a Super Gigunda towel made for Super Gigunda people. And she's obviously showing it, so we're going to let her show it to us. As a plus size babe, it can be so hard to find a towel that actually wraps all the way around you. So today, I'm excited to try out Lux Love Towels and see if it fits. Watch till the very end for a discount code. First off, I love this light blue color. It definitely looks wide enough. Now let's see if it fits my size 6X body comfortably. And just like that, it wraps all the way around and covers me fully, which I'm super impressed by. Yeah, I'm impressed too. That's crazy. She is she is so big. And this towel, guys, this towel is humongous. It looks like the electric blanket I have on the couch for my son. It's seriously the size of a blanket. And they're $75. Like, again, show us your privilege. Show us your entitlement. How many of you could afford to just buy two or three or four $75 towels? You know what I mean? Like, how much money could you save if you just lost some weight and could use a regular towel? Right? Like, a regular towel doesn't even fit around me, and I'm not even that huge. Um, just buy bigger towels. But I mean, Jesus, I would never, if I had the money, I would never spend $75 on a freaking towel. This is ridiculous. Why do you need a towel to wrap around your body, just dry off with a towel or two, then put on your clothes and go about your business? This is not like, how much time are you going to spend walking around in a towel that this is an absolute necessity? Go to Walmart and buy a blanket and use it. For twenty dollars right there, thirty bucks tops. I say saved you like fifty bucks. Lux Love makes towels that will fit everybody. And of course, she probably wants you to use her uh, code because I'm sure, as as a sponsor, that she gets a kickback from this, right? Which is fine. I don't care about people having sponsors and ads and stuff like that. But this is a very expensive towel, and of course, she's going to want you to buy this instead of doing what I said and going to Walmart and spending twenty five or thirty dollars on a cheap blanket. Like a big throw blanket. That's what this looks like. And that's exactly what you could get and use it the same way. Lux Love has payment plans and the option. Oh my God. If you have to set up a payment plan for a towel, don't buy that towel and save money on food. 
for free shipping. Use code JBay for 10% off. And follow them at Lux Love Towels. As a plus size babe, it can be. Okay, let's look at a couple more. Um, here we go. This one says plus size hygiene. Hang on one second. Front. About how to stay so fresh and so clean, clean as a plus size babe. Yup, that's right. I'm talking about plus size hygiene. Okay, this will be interesting. And as somebody who has worked with plus size people in a hospital setting, in a pre-hospital setting, it it's tricky. And like, again, I know Amber insists she can reach her own butt, but she physically cannot. This hygiene is a legit issue when people get this big, guys. They get mad. They get mad when you say, oh, fat people smell. No, no, I don't think all fat people smell. I'm not saying that. But once you get to this woman's size, you get to the size of people like her and Amber and Food Beauty, you cannot reach certain things, okay? You cannot wash properly. You cannot dry properly. You cannot stay hygienic. When it comes to being a plus size babe, I have a dream team of personal care items, and I'm going to share them with you today. And I'm sure they're all expensive and mo a lot of your viewers cannot afford them. The number one item on my list is tea tree soap. The remedy for skin irritation for plus. I make tea tree soap. It was one of the first natural products I've ever made. That's a very good recommendation from her. Natural tea tree soap. Now, tea tree is uh, antiseptic, antimicrobial, antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. It's very good. Very, very good. Uh, you don't want your, you put it on anything that a cat can lick. You know what I mean? Um, I've made a tea, I, I know somebody who makes a tea tree and cedarwood soap for fleas for dogs, but do dogs don't lick themselves as much to like groom as cats do. You don't want to do anything like that for a cat. But, um, yeah, it's a very good thing. But even then you still can't properly get into the creases and folds um without assistance somebody here in the comments says i haven't watched but i assume you say a sponge on a stick guys when you need to start using sponges on sticks and stuff to wipe your butt crack and clean in your folds and like uh uh you need something to go spelunking in your belly button to get all the lint out of it you really need to make some life changes plus size babes, whether it comes to preventing or healing irritation. But wait, there's more. The next hygiene item I swear by as a plus size babe is body wipes. Your little pocket size refreshers ensuring you stay fresh and clean on the go. Yeah, because you just sweat a lot. And even then, it's still hard because during the day, you just get that heat and moisture and sweat in your folds between all your rolls. And you can't possibly keep that all clean and you get like yeast growing and 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 growth and build up and you start getting rashes and sores and redness and sometimes they can turn into open wounds and cellulitis god i mean i'm not kidding it's very unhygienic to be this woman's size these fat activists show you all this fun and and the best stuff and they show you all dressed up and happy in their makeup and their clothes and their hair done and their nails and their tattoos they don't show show you these very um dark and unappealing and unsexy and uncute parts of being this big if you want to see realities of getting your shower in the morning and getting dressed and getting somewhere look watch my 600 pound life because that is a, a real glimpse of how people her size live. It's not all just this everything's wonderful, happy, skippy, rainbow, unicorns, life is great. No, she leads a very difficult, painful existence. Your battle against chafing, consider it conquered. Yeah, and your battle of chafing is never going to go away if you constantly have skin rubbing together and, and against itself. That's never going to go away. You can manage it as best as you can, but the best way to, to, to control it and to help it is to lose some weight. With Mega Babe chafing products, they're linked up on my profile. Keep discomfort at bay Mega and your babe. confidence soaring. And now, a standing ovation for the Lumi All Body Deodorant. Your backstage pass to an odor-free extravaganza. I'm sorry, but once you get that big and you're moving around a lot like her, you're not going to be odor-free. You're not. Even people a lot smaller than her who have rolls and stuff and are really active. It gets funky. It just does. Uh. 
But let's not forget the unsung hero, the back scrubber. Stepping in to get into them nooks and crannies. With this powerhouse lineup, you've got plus size. The back scrubber. Everybody can use a back scrubber and stuff. You have trouble reaching your back. But what she's talking about, she said to reach the nooks and the crannies. So she's basically talking about a a, a brush or a sponge on a stick to, to reach your back folds. But you got to also use it to get up under her rolls, up under your fupa. Uh, sometimes when you have really big legs like Jordan and Amber, you need a, to actually have someone lift up your ankle rolls to, to wash and rinse and dry under there. And, and if you're too embarrassed or too proud to ask for help, that stuff's not going to get cleaned properly and you're going to have problems and it can lead to serious infections, guys. I, I mean, this is like a real thing. That's hygiene tackled. Celebrate your uniqueness and let your confidence shine. You can have a lot of uniqueness, but being super gigantic is not the kind of uniqueness you want. You can be fun. You can be quirky. You can dress however you want. You can be into whatever weird things you're into, but painting being dangerously morbidly obese as like your uniqueness and let it shine and embrace it that's dangerous and you're th this is a death cult and she's just encouraging people to stay sick and unhealthy and, and she's giving them this like illusion that they can live this like happy like glamorous life that she doesn't have all these issues it's so disingenuous she, she pisses me off because you're worth every ounce of self-care luxury. You are worth every ounce of self-care and luxury. And the best form of self-care is to, one, not let yourself get this size. But if you have, say, okay, I screwed up. Things happened. It happened. I'm going to start making better choices. I'm going to start and I'm going to start doing things to better myself, to lose weight, to make myself healthier. And go with it. Get through the struggle. Work through it. And be proud of all your wins. For every pound you lose, be happy. Be proud of yourself. Be proud that you are taking the hard route and doing what needs to be done for actual happiness and actual health. Because these people, the biggest problem with people like Jalen is they are ultimately lazy. They don't want to do the hard work. They don't want to give up the food. They don't want to give up the comfort of eating as much as they want of what they want whenever they want. It's easy to be fat and to overeat and to eat what you want and have the cake and have the junk food and have the fast food anytime you want it and sit on the couch and Netflix and chill all the time. It is hard to say, I'm going to eat the healthier food. I'm still a little bit hungry because I overeat and I'm trying to eat less and to walk away and feel a little hungry and to pass up on your snack and to go and go for a walk when you feel like just sitting on the couch or something like that. Yes, it's harder to live healthier, but it is more worth it in the end. This life she's living, she acts like it's so great, all her traveling and stuff. Well, I'm glad she's doing it now because she's not gonna have, she's not long for this world. You know what I mean? Do yourself a favor and treat yourself better, then you'll have more chances to do more than this woman is gonna do with her life because you're gonna be around longer. Let's talk about how to stay so fresh and so clean, clean as a. Okay. We'll watch one more because I could rage about Jalen every single day. <laughs> uh, okay, how restaurants can be more size inclusive. You don't need to go to a restaurant, Jalen. You don't. If you've ever been uncomfortable in a restaurant because of your size, I know the struggle. And that's why I'm making today's video. Today's video is all about how restaurants can be more size inclusive and accessible for people of all sizes and abilities. With this video, I hope to educate some restaurant owners so that they can make their restaurants more size inclusive and accessible. Here restaurants, again, just like planes, want to get as many people in as they can, serve as many people as they can, turn over as many tables as they can, and make money. They don't, they want you to be comfortable, but they don't care that much about accommodating people that they have super gigantic 7x seats for the the rare times that somebody your size comes in now more and more people in america are big we're really freaking big in this country but for the most part they can fit into restaurant seats and if they're a little uncomfortable and it's a little tight they don't care they're sitting there they have their food they're happy they go they eat they leave they're not asking for all these special accommodations like this press here 
Here are my 10 solutions for how restaurants can create a more inclusive environment. Solution number one, comfortable seating. Restaurants should provide spacious and sturdy chairs without armrests so that people of all sizes can dine comfortably. Yeah, but most people want armrests um, because it's more comfortable for them. And what about people like older people who have trouble getting up and they need armrests to help sit in the seat comfortably and get up comfortably well screw them right screw those old people who need those arm armrests to get up because Jalen doesn't like them so Jalen gets what Jalen wants screw everybody else right oh she's making me mad solution number two flexible table arrangements they do have flexible table arrangements they have they have tables and they have booths and if you can't fit in either then again you don't need to be going to a restaurant j bay you need to be at home eating some chicken some vegetables and some brown rice or quinoa and going for a walk you don't need to be sitting at chilies or applebee's having the appetizer and the two for meal and the the dessert and the and the and the 800 calorie margaritas Offer adjustable table configurations with ample space in between so people in larger bodies can navigate everything comfortably. Okay, but they can only move things so much. I've worked in a restaurant. I've worked in a chain restaurant. They can only, they are designed to get so many tables in and they do move tables around to accommodate beggars or parties and stuff, but they can't just pull out tables into the middle of the aisle and stuff like that because... People need to be able to get through to go to the bathroom. Waitresses, servers need to be able to get through with food and big giant trays of food and drinks and not worry about having to go a super long way or try to squeeze past you and then God forbid drop something on you and something that cuts you or something that's hot and burn you. You know, this is not just about you. You are not the only person in the restaurant. There are actual logistical problems and issues with this stuff, right? Solution number three, accessible restrooms. Ensure restrooms are spacious. And Our restrooms were pretty dang spacious, include especially the handicap stall. If you can't fit in these again, you don't need to be going to a restaurant. Spend your free time doing something else like going for a walk or swimming. You can comfortably accommodate plus size individuals and those with disabilities. Solution number four, reservation. Again, see right there. It's a last minute for plus size individuals and people with disabilities. She has to throw that in there to throw some credibility and legitimacy to her claim, right? She don't give a crap really about people with disabilities. All she cares about is Jay Lynn. Reservation flexibility. Allow guests to request seating preferences during the reservation process. And they do when they people will call and make a reservation and they can very easily say, hey, can I get a table instead of a booth? And we go, OK, and we make that reservation. But again, they can only move tables and stuff out so far because the way ta like restaurants are configured, they don't have huge gaps of open space. Because that's not conducive to making money. The tables are all fairly close to each other and everything because they want to fit as many people in as they can. They don't have like 50 feet between each table in case somebody comes in and needs needs 20 extra feet of room. It's, it's just they don't make money that way. Businesses are set up to make money. This will allow people to choose seating that suits their needs. Solution number five, provide key information on your website. Provide key information like table configurations, seat dimensions, chair weight capacities, and more on your website where it's easily accessible. Solution number six, ensure that your tables are not secured to the ground. Make sure they can be moved to make room for individuals who might need more space. And a lot of them are, just like I said, we would move tables to, to put together a, a giant party and stuff like that, but they can only be moved a certain way to, to a certain degree. How about solution number seven, J Bay? Don't go to a restaurant and try losing some weight. Go to a restaurant when you fit into that restaurant. Restaurants are more accommodating than ever now. Just like I said earlier with everything else, everything in America is made so much bigger and more accommodating than ever. And she's outgrowing all of it. At what point do we say enough is enough? Hey, hey, the, the problem is with you. You know, so the solution is on you. You fix it yourself. It's not our problem. Solution number seven, offer more room in booth seating. Make sure that there's plenty of... If they made booths so much bigger, then and the kids would be falling through them. Skinny people would not be able to fit into them. Okay, but they... 
they would have to make the buildings bigger, then make the booths bigger, and then either fit less tables in or have to, like I said, make the building super bigger. It's it's just not like she wants the world to change for her instead of just accommodating to the world. When you've outgrown the world, especially here in the United States of fatness, you really, really need to take a look at your life choices. Space to move around between the table and booths. If I do these spotlights, I'm sorry, man. These people wind me up. I am really sorry if I offend anybody, but hey, the truth hurts. And I grew up in a time when people didn't sugarcoat shit and I was told what was what and you like it or you live with it. It is what it is. Suck it up and, and, and do better. Just do better. See, this will ensure that people of various bodies I'm like the last of the Gen Xers <laughs> sizes can sit there and be comfortable. Solution number eight, staff training. Holy shit, she's still Train going. staff on what type of accommodations can help plus size individuals have a better experience. They do. They know what is there and what's not there. And the waitresses are going to be nice to you for the most part. Every now and then you get a biatch. But if you're nice to your waitresses, most of them are nice to you because they make their money on tips and they know they're not going to get a tip if they're just a jackass. So most of them are going to be nice to you. They don't care what you order. In fact, they probably want you to order more food because the bigger the bill, usually the bigger the tip. So this really isn't so much an issue. Like I said, every now and then you get a, 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 a person who's just horrible with people and that happens. That's a personal thing. But for the most parts, there is a standard and wait waitresses and bartenders will be nice to you because their tips and their livelihood depend on it. Solution number nine. Oh my God, dining. she's still going. If you've got an outdoor dining area, make sure you have some chairs without armrests. And opt for chairs that you see. So again, she's asking them to buy special chairs and have to store them somewhere and keep them someplace and have them ready in the off chance that somebody with a size six X butt happens to be out and about and wants to eat at their restaurant. Like I said, a lot of people her size are not going out. They don't want to be seen eating in public. They don't want to be at a restaurant. A lot of people like this don't go out much because they are embarrassed and because they just physically have so much trouble. So she's asked, and then, you know, like the restaurants have to buy these, extend the costs, find places to store them, be able to get them out. It, oh God, like I said, just, just fit into the world, please. Not have metal grating. This is a small change that can create a more open and inclusive atmosphere. And let me tell you, I've seen some big people at restaurants. I've waited on some big people. So their seats their chairs and in fact the restaurant i worked at the chairs were all um armless they didn't have arms and they they held some big people there were some big people that we've taken care of when i worked there um and those people sat there and ate and were just fine and didn't complain so it just makes you wonder how big are the people she's talking about how big is she actually in real life when there's no filters to like that she has to like request all this crap here. And last but not least, solution 10, showcase photos. Consider showcasing- Really, I thought it was going to be eat less, but pfft. Offer lots of healthy, tasty, light, low calorie fare, but oh no, they wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. Photos of your typical seating and table setups on your website. And most restaurants, if they do have a website, you can look and kind of get an idea of what they look like. And you can go in a few minutes early and look. And if it doesn't accommodate you, you can leave and go somewhere else. I'm sorry, but when you put yourself at such a disadvantage, you need to deal with the shortcomings and disadvantages that come with being your size. Right. It helps people plan. But it's okay. The restaurants, yeah, I'm putting pictures up. That's fine. Most places really do, I believe now, right? Ahead and sets the stage for a comfortable and welcoming dining experience. And these are just some of the ways that restaurants can become more size friendly. Oh, so J-Bay only has 10 things on this little list that restaurants can do to appease her. Um, again, this is just let me know what you think about her in the comments. Um, again, a very entitled, privileged woman who doesn't know reality from anything. Um, these people just 
li- don't live in the real world. They demand, demand, demand. They take, 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 and they don't want to give. Uh, and it's really frustrating. And so this will be the opening um, video to the uh, Spotlight series of the Fat Activists. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think. What do you think about her travel accommodations, her travel requests, her airplane uh, petition, and her... Uh, her um, uh, call outs of the restaurants. I will talk to you guys in the next one and I hope you have a good day. Happy Halloween.